Hi, what is up? Welcome to this video. In this video, I'm going to be painting from this reference photo. This is part of the Paint With Me Challenge, a challenge that I host every month. You can find out more about it in the description box below. So let's get started and I'll show you the process of my painting. All right, so I'm going to be listing all of the supplies below, but if you're curious about what colors I'm using specifically for this painting, they are Hansa Yellow Medium, Sap Green, Pyrrole Scarlet, Payne's Gray, and Burnt Sienna, all by Daniel Smith. All right, so the first thing I want to share with you is the sketch study that I did before doing the larger piece. So I did this in my sketchbook. It's a five by eight, and I did it very, very loosely just to get a feel for the colors and the layout and a little bit of the technique and how I wanted to approach the cantaloupe specifically because that's really the focus point of my painting. So before I started painting, I did go in and do a really rough sketch for the layout of the melons and the grape clusters. Is It was just so that I would know that I wasn't going to run off the edge of the page and that everything sort of fit nicely. So I just like to do that uh, not to sketch out all the details, but more like I said for layout and composition. So this reference photo is nice because it has a nice composition to it. So I basically just took what I saw and laid it out on paper. And then I started to paint. And I have been personally working on developing my own loose style when it comes to watercolors. And what I've learned is that Making a decision on what to include and what not to include is a skill or a muscle that needs to be built and it needs to be practiced over time in order to be able to do it with confidence and more intention, I think. And I feel like it's definitely something that I've been working on and it does uh, feel a little easier now than it did when I first started painting more loosely with watercolors. And so that is an interesting thing for me to observe of myself. And especially when it comes to painting this sort of, um, I guess I call it a still life because it's objects, but especially because I decided before I started painting this at the focal point and where I would concentrate most of the detail in this loose painting would be on the cantaloupes. And the cantaloupes, I didn't really know, besides the sketchbook sketch I did, I wasn't really quite sure how I was gonna approach it. And I did wanna keep it loose, but I didn't want it so loose that it didn't have those details. I really feel like on a loose watercolor painting, at least this is what I've learned so far, is that having those little pockets of detail where you want the eye to go and focus are really, really important. So deciding what those want to be before starting is a good thing to have. And so I had decided it would be the cantaloupes. I knew that there would be uh, featured in that way and I wanted to get them right. and. What was interesting about this was that they didn't go right very, well, they didn't go right at all at the beginning. And you can see that I um, had a little bit of a timing issue. I put uh, paint in a little bit too early before it was dry. And what's really interesting to know, and I should say here, is that I'm using a paper that I I'm not very familiar with. So this is Saunders Waterford and I wanted to try it because some of the artists that I admire also use it and I just wanted to give it a try. I usually use arches. So Saunders Waterford is a really beautiful paper, but I noticed that uh, like most papers, the timing is different, right? So when you get used to painting on a certain paper, you get used to the timing and I guess it all, it also changes depending on the weather. So if it's more dry or more humid, then the timing will change too. But papers behave definitely differently and I can tell the difference uh, just because I've gotten so used to painting on arches that I can tell the difference when I get to Saunders and it stays 
uh, wet a lot longer than I'm used to and the paint definitely bleeds on it differently in a beautiful way but not just something I'm not really used to and so I had a little bit of trouble but I quickly learned sort of a little bit better how to work with it as I was painting and sometimes that's what you need you need to just try things in order to you, know, you just jump right in and you learn as you go and so that's really what I was doing here and I learned very quickly that like I said that the paper dries slower than I'm used to so I have to give it a little bit more time and so with this painting I started to jump around and go to other areas uh, so I'd work on the grapes and the grapes are very loose in my opinion I because I wanted the cantaloupes to be the focal point I purposely didn't add a lot of detail I actually felt at one point I was getting a little bit too detailed with the grapes so I had to pull back so it's definitely something that uh, is a balancing act for me at least and like I said before this is a skill that I am working on building for myself uh, the skill of making decisions on what to include and what not to include what what part is detailed what part isn't detailed what part am i going to keep loose and what parts of the photo maybe don't even need to be in the painting so it's a lot of decisions that are needing to be made before the painting really is started or finished i guess i could uh, practice a little bit more through study sketches to really see how I feel about what needs to be included and what doesn't um, and the things that are really going to make the painting pop or give it that little extra uh, just by adding details in certain areas and so you know I had practiced bunches of grapes uh, previously this month so I sort of had an idea for how little areas of stems and those pockets and the colors could add interest without adding too much detail so I felt good about that except in this bunch of grapes on the left I really wish I had added one more single grape at the very bottom it just looks a little blunt and <laughs> I don't know why I didn't notice that I was as I was painting but I think just uh with these loose paintings I feel like at the very beginning they look not very defined for me and they eventually start taking shape as those finishing touches are added and so i basically ended up going back and adding the interior cavity of the cantaloupes last because i had to wait for it to dry and i decided to use white gouache and i don't often use white gouache i've been starting to use white gouache more lately and it's a nice way to add a little bit of detail especially in things like this the little seeds um, and so i'll use it sparingly uh, in places like this and i feel like it does add a little bit of extra another way i guess i could have done this was used masking fluid on the seeds and then painted on top uh, with color but that's just a different way of doing this and i sort of like how organic the seeds feel because I used a brush and I kind of dotted them in at different angles so there's something nice about it that um, turned out okay and um, this last cantaloupe I realized at the very end that it wasn't very balanced with the first one so the first one had a lot more variation in color so I actually here am sort of fixing a mistake in some ways and I'm coming back and adding in a little bit of depth of color and I think that it really did help bring uh, the bottom melon up to the same sort of level of interest as the top one so I hope that this little process video was interesting to watch maybe it was even a little bit helpful to hear me talk about the process I really appreciate you coming and spending your time watching my video and if you liked it, please feel free to give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel. Let me know if this was helpful or if there are specific things you'd like to know about the painting process that I can share with you in future videos. I will see you next time.